Hey friend, welcome back. So in today's session, let's talk a little bit more about the health benefits of iodine, but first talk about, is it safe? I've seen this comment come up on both Instagram and YouTube a lot. A lot of people are concerned about the effects of iodine, and what if you have an iodine sensitivity or an iodine allergy, okay? And then we're also gonna talk about what if you have Hashimoto's or Graves' disease or some unique consideration where we know iodine might be helpful, but you've been told that you should not take iodine. So let's first address, is iodine safe? Well, let me just tell all of you, whether or not you think you have an allergy to iodine or a sensitivity to iodine, you need to understand that your body contains between 20 to 25 milligrams of iodine, okay? Now, you might say, wait, what do you mean, Mike? I'm allergic to iodine. How could I have iodine in my body and still be alive? You have a sensitivity to iodinated contrast, okay? So you went to the doctor before, you were maybe getting an MRI or a CT scan or something like that, and you were given some iodinated contrast and you had a reaction to that. Well, guess what? There are other elements to that contrast besides just iodine, okay? Remember, iodine is in your food. You must have iodine for various biologic functions, including but not limited to making thyroid hormone. I can tell you, if you did not have any iodine in your body or thyroid hormone, you would not be able to watch this video right now. You would not be here. You might have Down syndrome or you might have a brain disorder because iodine is central to overall cellular energy production, metabolic rate, growth and development. Uh, there's a lot of challenges specifically related to neurodevelopment that are linked with iodine deficiency. You might also have a gorder, okay? So assuming you're here, you're able to intelligize the content that is that you're hearing through your phone or your computer screen, you do not have an iodine sensitivity or allergy. You have an allergy or sensitivity to iodinated contrast. That's number one. Number two, you've been told, I have Hashimoto's, therefore I shouldn't take iodine. Okay, let's, let's address that second safety concern before we get into all of the health benefits, okay? When you ingest iodine, okay, what happens? There's an increase in TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. You may be like, wait, Mike, no, 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 no. Iodine's not related to TSH. It actually is, okay? This is a pituitary hormone that then tells the hypothalamus and so forth that will then increase production and increase an enzyme called TPO. So this is called thyroperoxidase. Peroxidase, hmm, peroxidase, hmm, I've heard, oh, free radicals, yes. So there is uh, an enzyme that actually creates oxidative stress in the process of iodinating tyrosine to make thyroid hormone. Okay, you've heard about T3, you've heard about T4, okay? The T in thyroid hormone, thyroxine and triodothyronine, the T stands for tyrosine. Tyrosine is an amino acid. The three or the four or the two or the one indicate how many iodine molecules have been iodinated on the amino acid tyrosine, okay? You might say, okay, I am getting it. I follow you, Mike. Where are you going with this? Well, TPO makes these molecules, but it also at the same time makes free radical stress. So I'm just gonna put free radicals, okay? Now, that's not a problem because you have glutathione peroxidase and other antioxidants in your thyroid gland. However, and this is where the however comes in, for people that have been told they should not take iodine, if you have Graves' disease or if you have Hashimoto's, because these antioxidants that are there to naturally combat the increase in free radicals that are associated with taking iodine depend upon selenium, okay? This is called selenium. These are selenium-dependent free radical neutralizing enzymes. Again, so you take a big bolus, Sally Smith here's, I need iodine. Oh my gosh, it's a solution that I need. So she goes, okay, I'm gonna take 12.5 milligrams of iodine, which is a super physiologic dose. It's a high dose, okay? Sally hasn't had a Brazil nut or any selenium for years because she's allergic to nuts or doesn't like nuts or whatever. So she has a deficiency in the, the mineral that's dependent on neutralizing the free radicals. So this process goes on, she makes free radicals, and then she has a reaction it flares up her Hashimoto's or her graves, okay? So was the problem the iodine or was the problem an inability to neutralize the increase, the, the natural increase in free radical stress as a function of making more thyroid hormones? 
Um, I don't think we should villainize the iodine. We should really be more concerned about the free radical stress and ways to circumvent that or overcome that. By, by recommending, if you're going to take really high doses of, of iodine, 12.5 milligrams or more, that you also increase your selenium intake. Two, two to 400 micrograms of selenium. So you can get 18 micrograms in a Brazil nut. You could take a couple Brazil nuts a day if you're taking iodine and just make sure maybe you're also considering taking glutathione or N-acetylcysteine or things like that. So I, I just wanna make it clear, iodine is not really the problem. It's the uh, iodine associated increase or boost in free radical stressors that can be the problem, but those are mitigated. It, you can mitigate those by just increasing your selenium intake and also increasing in acetylcysteine or you know, cysteine-rich foods, methionine-rich foods, things like that. So we're going to continue on to talk about health benefits, but friends, I just want to welcome you all back. It's Mike Lutzel. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for subscribing. If you found this video helpful so far, I would be honored if you could leave a comment below. Just say, hey, thank you. This is great. I would also be especially honored if you could share this as a direct text message with a friend of yours who might benefit from all the benefits that, that iodine has to offer. We're talking about especially for new mothers, mothers that are expecting you know, to, to give birth to a child. Young children, iodine has so many health benefits. This is the under-recognized nutrient that can really help young children because iodine is so important for cognition and, and growth and things like that. I'm a huge fan of recommending liquid iodine because it's easier to titrate the dose. Not many people need to take a whopping dose of 12.5 milligrams. You can start out with you know, three to 400 micrograms or one milligram. So we do recommend on our website, our sister company, I'll put links below and also coupon code to a liquid iodine. I travel with this all the time. It's great. Like if you're in the mountains or you're in a third world country and you want to like make sure your water, you don't get giardia or things like that, you put a few drops in the water. Remember iodine is in the halogen family. You might remember halogens, chlorine, bromine, fluoride. Okay. Iodine, it turns out is, is a lot more healthy than those other halogens but it can prevent and sort of harm bacterial uh, contaminants and things like that by affecting their cell membrane health. So I'll put links below, use the coupon code HI to check out for that, okay? So remember, it's not necessarily that iodine's a problem, it's that, the, that iodine consumption, especially if it's a, a whopping dose, could increase free radical stress, and if you're deficient in other nutrients, that can be a problem. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about conditions that might benefit iodine uh, intake and who should consider taking iodine uh, because of goiterogens in the diet. So if you're a vegan or vegetarian or you eat a lot of brassica foods, this specifically applies to you. So I'm not gonna uh, spell it all out, but we'll just put goit, okay? For goiterogens, these are compounds that either directly or indirectly antagonize the absorption and utilization of iodine. I'm not going to pick on brassicas. If you love your Brussels sprouts or your broccoli sprouts and your sephorophane, that's fine. But you might want to consider adding iodine to your diet because there's ample re research to show that brassicas, soy, we have millet, we have cassava. Uh, gosh, am I missing out on anything? There, there's a lot of <laughs> goiterogens in the environment. Smoking cigarettes, that was it. I was looking for something. There's a thiocyanate, I think it is. I could be getting that wrong. There, it's been a long time since I've looked at this, but there is a goiterogen in cigarettes. So cigarette smokers, brassica eaters, if you eat a lot of cassava and sorghum and millet, you should supplement with iodine because chances are you're not getting enough from your diet anyway. You're exposed to all these goiterogens and you have halogens in your bloodstream, my friends, because let's talk about um, perfluoro and fluoridated. This is fluoride. It's a lowercase l. Oh my gosh, my chemistry teacher is just mad at me right now. He's probably not going to watch this video, but if he did, he'd be so pissed, okay, because I had a, a capital L there for fluoride. So um, halogens in the environment can antagonize iodine, okay? So if you're drinking unfiltered water, I love swimming and I think it's a great exercise, but if you go into a pool that has chlorine or bromine, uh, guess what? You're going to be displacing iodine in the body. So that's just the downside there. So you eat goiterogens, 
and you're drinking unfiltered water, big no-no, just get a filter. Come on, just save up some money. We did a little thing and, and the, I, hopefully that coupon code is still alive. I'll, I'll let you know. With custom pure water filters here in Seattle, Washington, they do a three-stage filtration process with carbon filtration and then two resin tanks. I'll link that below. They did have a coupon HIH. I don't know if it's still active, but I will check in on that and let you know uh, below. But the big one, my friends, I think this is why we're seeing so many issues with thyroid disease, Hashimoto's, uh, and potentially birth defects and Down syndrome and all the issues with iodine insufficiency is perfluoro and fluoride, fluoride uh, is everywhere. It's, it's in flame retardants, it's in cookware, it's in that slick lining uh, in fast food containers, uh, it's in your carpets, it's in kids' clothing. I mean, gosh, some states created some insane rule, you can look this up, where kids' clothing must have flame retardants because heaven forbid, mom smokes and drops a cigarette on the toddler and the toddler catches on fire. I mean, the probability of that happening is slim to none, but there's legislation that mandates that kids' clothing now has fluoridated, you know, perfluoro flame retardants, okay? It's in your couch, it's in your bedding. If you didn't vet your bedding, it's in your pillows, okay? A lot of people don't know this, and this accumulates in your fat tissue, it's antagonizing all of your endocrine system, causing infertility, causing hormonal dysregulation, but in the context of today's video, it's also causing cellular iodine deficiency and deficient states. So I'm making the case here is why you should spend a few dollars a month, liquid iodine, really helpful to help displace these things, especially if you're eating goiterogens in the diet, the millet, the wheat, the cassava, the soy, the brassica, if you smoke cigarettes. And if you don't know, if you're like, dude, I bought my bed five years ago, I don't know if it's a flame retardant free bed or not. I don't know about my couch or if you're renting a condo, you don't know, you know what the previous owners had uh, in the carpet. So I do recommend when you get your own place, get rid of the carpets, get rid of the rugs, do hardwood floors, uh, open up the windows. You know, We've been told staying home is so safe over the past couple of years, but it's like your home can be the biggest source of toxins in your entire life, even above your diet, because you're, the air that you're breathing in, circulate, recirculating that air can be really problematic. So it's actually better to be outside, okay? Uh, and that's why in our home, I'm constantly tearing down walls and making new windows, literally making spots for new windows and trying to open up the windows as much as we can uh, to let fresh air in because you know, we do sleep in here, we work in the house, and I'm sure you do too, but you wanna have a lot of fresh air there. So I think that pretty much covers it. Um, but again, I think I just wanna harp in on this because I'm really passionate about helping kids thrive and giving kids the best start in life. They can really do a lot better with, with iodine. The research on iodine and IQ, verbal acuity, mental acuity, it's really profound. And again, our kids are being bombarded with schools are making them masks, they're eating junk food in the schools, um, the parents are oblivious to, to filtered water and the whole thing. So do your kid a favor, a few pennies a day you can give them iodine and I think it can go a long way. There's a lot of good research to show that iodine is helpful for children and neurodevelopment. So my friends, that is it for today. I'll put links to associated videos if you wanna dive more into iodine and some of the research, but as always, I'm grateful that you tuned in all the way. Thank you for subscribing and sharing and we'll catch you in a future video down the road. Bye now.